Well, welcome to a new Harry's Garage video and today's car is this, the BMW Z8 that was arrived in 2000 and was on sale 2000 to 2003, so a very limited run, making it 20 years old now, which I find hard to believe. The car just arrived from nowhere. When it, I remember being at Evo, this is the issue where we did a UK drive in it. It, we didn't understand it really, just because it was sort of harking back to the um, BMW um, 507, the sort of very um, iconic BMW of the past, two-seater convertible they made from, I think, 57 to 59, so a long time previously. And they wanted to get re-energized those sort of sports car genes again, I suppose. And they threw a whole load of tech at it. It's aluminium bodied, it had the V8, M5 engine, the five litre engine, 400 horsepower. But it was the looks that got us, this sort of upright screen. The Z3 had arrived at the same time. It had a sort of hint of Z3 about it. And yeah, looking back to our article back in um, 2000, we drove it very briefly in California, but this is our first go in the UK. And we gave it three stars at the end of it because it didn't really do anything particularly well. And we were confused by this sort of retro looks. At that point, we hadn't seen cars like the Ford GT come out or the BMW Mini or the Fiat 500. And now I think looking at it in fresh time, 20 years on, I think it's really coming into its own. So anyway, let's go and have a closer look at some of the details on this car. Now this car was conceived while Chris Bangle was head of BMW design and Henrik Fisker did the exterior design of it. And I think it's the front where the big surprise came because they weren't the normal kidneys. This is very much like the BMW 507, this separated look and then these stylized sort of um, spotlights in the grille with chrome finishing. Then you've got the covered headlights as well, xenon headlights, all aluminium, and just a very sort of curvy body. Then this use of, excess use of chrome, look at this side gill here, and the mirrors all in chrome. That's quite an unusual look. That was a hark back again to 507. 18 inch wheels on here, um, 40 section tires, aluminium, very upright screen compared to what you expect really and again that was because of 507 um, much more the design of you know even Z3 or Z4 much more rate than this quite an upright screen and that gave you sort of this airy space inside I think the interior is um, a spectacular part of this car but again we'd never really seen a coloured dash this flash of body colour right across the dash and the dials right central in the middle of the dash Left-hand drive only, spoked wheels, no buttons or anything on the wheel. These rollover hoops, slightly disappointing, but they were legislation at the time. You also get electric soft top on the Z8 and a hard top as well. I put the roof down to show it because it looks a bit odd, I think, with the um, hood upright because it's a very upright rear screen. So I think it looks so much better with the hood folded. Round the back, really beautifully done. These neon lights, I should have mentioned them on the indicator on the side as well. Very stylized. This is before LED lights, these are neon lights. Twin exhausts at the back, all very clean. And I open the boot. I have to do it on the key. A proper boot and uh, beautifully carpeted. I'll explain that as a wind deflector, but we'll use that in a moment. But yeah, this was a, a very usable two-seater um, sports car and made all the better by having that BMW M5 engine up the front. V8 engine, so yeah, five litre engine. It's a strange engine, this one. Um, it sounds really woofly V8, but to me, it isn't a proper M engine. Um, and I mean that because it, although it has individual throttle valves, etc., it wasn't quite as powerful as you'd expect. So five litres, 100 horsepower per litre is a good guide to a um, good engine. And the E46 M3 of the same time this was on sale was 105 horsepower per litre. This is 78 horsepower per litre. My Espada 
engine is 90 horsepower per litre, so it wasn't quite as highly tuned as you expect a normal M5 engine. It's also got cast iron manifolds on it, rather than that tubular manifolds you expect to see on an M engine. But they did manage to get it right back uh, into the chassis. It's 50-50 weight distribution, this. And it is a stonking engine, don't get me wrong, but it, it doesn't quite have that character, that high revving character of other engines. But anyway, let's take it outside, take it for a drive. As soon as you get in, it just shouts the Z8. It has this distinctive look, this flash of body colour going across the dash. And the spoked wheel, it's like, ooh, this is a bit different. Central uh, speedo and rev counter and things. And just the sort of lack of buttons and this sort of modern look. It's very interesting being in this now compared to when it was brand new because we hadn't seen the new BMW Mini and that sort of used body colour and the Fiat 500 used body colour but it was a real shock. It was, oh, it's a bit plastic. It's not very posh, this car. Very nicely finished though. All oh, this leather here, uh, leather top. And this car is quite unusual in this blue, so I can't remember the name, it's written under the bonnet, I'll flash it up now. Because almost all production was silver, there was 5,700 and something cars made, and three and a half thousand of them were in the titanium silver that was in the Bond movie. And then another 1,500 were black. We had a black one on test at Evo and I did think it looked really smart. And then there was a mix, there was a red, there was this blue, a grey, and some bespoke colours right at the end by BMW, about 125, you could do individual colours on it. But wow, what a statement it is now. And I, I just think it's ageing very well. It's also, I think it's worth a mention, it's peak key. I mentioned it on the CSL, didn't I? But this, to me, is peak BMW key. Tiny, and you lock it in the middle and do the boot on it and things. It's just a lovely thing goes in there. And to start it, twist key, you get a button. There we are. Start it manual, of course, in this car. You have to go, Alpina did do an auto version, but they threw away the M5 engine and put a regular 4.8 litre um, V8 BMW unit instead. Strange things also, like with the windows. Where are the windows? How do you put the windows down? Well, there's a button in the door here and I can set it to do left or right or just put it in the middle and it does both windows together. Very clever, it's also the button that decides if beside it is how you adjust the electric mirrors as well. So all done by one button there and you think, well they haven't even bothered to fit a radio. Yes they have, that's under a cover here and that exposes this, you know, r this first attempt at sort of navigation, telephone and that sort of thing uh, on there. And the DSC off, you want to turn traction control off. Ventilation on here, all click buttons, no auto setting. You decide how hot or cold you want it on here. Direction, fan speed, and if you want air conditioning. Electric wheel, that comes in and out the dash, doesn't, doesn't adjust for um, doesn't go up and down. You've got cruise control on there, wipers, indicators, usual things, and full of little cubby holes in the door, beautifully snapped shut uh, ones, little ones here. Um, there are locking um, pads behind the seats. I can see there's little places you can lock away stuff. And I think your know, glove box has got a key on it as well because it's an open car most of the time. I've obviously having it with the roof down. I've put the um, hair net in the back as well because I find this car is one that needs it. Memorable look inside, reminiscent now of the similar sort of buttons of Mini um, that we hadn't seen, BMW Mini. Anyway, let's crack on. Oh, you get all, all the toys as well. You've got um, electric seats in here. That's, part of me thinks I ought to be lower down in the car, but it, it's all right, it's okay. Uh, heated seats as well, manual um, handbrake, obviously manual gearbox, and away we go. And that five litre V8 does a very good way fooling you, seeing there's lots of torque, short gearing, etc. So, so far, so good nice cockpit to be in so what I'm going to do now disappear off and you'll join me on some better roads in a moment first thing you pick up when you um, 
drive this for a bit is the V8 waffle. You're very, it's, it's not overbearing, it's not loud, but the engine is very definitely V8. And you get to hear it, but in a subtle way, which is all good. Not a thing, easy relationship, easy manual, lightest clutch really. Yeah, it's, it's a nice way to go down the road, your initial impressions. This is a very easy car to live with. It doesn't have any hissy fits over anything really. It's got more muscle at the bottom end than you expect. Life's good. If you want to energise things a bit, you can press sport. And it just, it just quickens up the throttle response, that's all. But uh, yeah. Initial impressions, really very nice, very polished. And this car really does not feel 20 years old at all. Um, but it has only done 19,000 miles. So that probably helps as well. It's a funny car, the reaction you get to it when you, you know, drive and go, because people don't spot it as a BMW. It's just this classic car, but it's not a classic car. It's a modern car, well, what is it? And because uh, you've got to think, how many people actually know what a BMW 507 of 1957 to 59 looks like? It's, it's a handful of people. So they just don't see BMW unless they're a Bond fan and they know it from the film. But uh, I quite like that about it. It's an individual car. There is no other the Z8. There is one model, one engine, a few colours, that's it. It's, it's sort of easy, it's not aggressive, it's not covered in spoilers or anything. And it, it, it just is one of those cars that people aren't quite sure what it is. If they don't know, they're not completely nerdy like you and me. It is a very easy going car. When you think it's, it doesn't feel like a convertible M5 or something, it doesn't have the bulk. It's 1560 kilos, I think, this car which they're all grumbling wasn't very light uh, back in the day, but actually it's not bad for a V8 um, coupe of this sort of size with all the toys, electric roof and all the rest of it. And also, the rivals at the time, there wasn't anything quite like this. You know, Ferrari 360 convertible, Aston DB7 I suppose was the closest thing to this. Anyway. Coming up to my little squirt, coming out of the D-limit sign, so I'm going to go into third, I think, to 2,000 RPM, doing 30, here we go. Whoa. Yeah, it's that initial push, that torque you feel, it doesn't go crisp or anything, that V8 mellow bar continues all the way up to just over the legal limit sir. But you sort of don't use the revs in this car, you've been driving it a few days and you rarely go past 5000 rpm. And that's the strange thing with this engine, it doesn't have the typical characteristics of M as we come to expect it, high revving. Well I suppose today we've got the turbocharged car, so it all feels like the turbo that you're tapping into the torque rather than that horsepower at the very top end. Probably can't hear it, but it's an easy car to heel and tow in. There's a bit of M5 there. Yeah, I don't want to throw it in, so... Right, that's the first time to the red line. I use this bit of road because it's extra bumpy. There's no adjustment on the dampers of this car. Just sense the yeah the lack of rigidity because of the, without the hard top or without a full structure being a convertible moves down here quite nicely. Fairly inert steering though. I, I'm not. It's not moving around. It's not following cameras. I'm not really picking up exactly what the front tyres are up to. But it's squashing bumps, it has a reasonable amount of suspension travel, but it's just initial, it's slightly firmer than I was expecting down here. 
but not not uncomfortable in any way. Right, I'll try it on the compression. Swallowed that well actually. I say I think it's got a fair bit of suspension travel that really helps on a road like this. See right round here. It's just the amount of revs. So odd the way you don't use all the revs available. It's so strange. 5,000 feels plenty on this, and yet it revs out to nearly seven. Well, it's probably time to summarise this and likes and dislikes, starting with the dislikes. Well, I suppose it, the surprise, when you look at all the ingredients, it's aluminium construction, this um, five-point linkage at the rear, all this M power, the fact it was a halo model, it doesn't quite drive with the sort of dynamism that you expect of an ultimate BMW. It's, it's an easy-going nature, which I'm sort of giving as a negative only because it's not what you expect when you see all the ingredients that have gone into this car. It's a bit aloof. The steering doesn't encourage you to push on. The, the brakes are fine, everything's okay, but it doesn't have that last little polish, dynamite polish that once goads you into feeling the limits of the car. It just it's a seven tenths car. Not a criticism. Well, I have to mention the left hand drive only. You know, be nice as right hand drive because it's a very usable car. Seven, that's why only 70 cars were officially came into the UK. It's probably more here now out of the 5,700 cars produced. But then I have to mention the price. Well, when I was looking at this, I did look at them when I had the Barquetta. I decided between the 550 Barquetta or one of these. This was 50,000. The 550 Barquetta at the time was 80. There was only 400 and something of those, but 5,700 of these. But now the value of these, well, this is on sale with hairpin is about to go on sale. I think it's knocking the door of 290 something thousand pounds because it's one owner from you, 19,000 miles has everything that came with it when new. Let's just try it around here as well. It's a good sound here, isn't it, when you flip it. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's a, it's a lovable car. It just, it just doesn't feel quite right pushing it like that, which is absolutely fine. Take me to Saint-Tropez or something, Fantastic, all up to the Lake District, all to Scotland. Absolutely fine, got cruise control, got enjoyment V8, and everybody's got that sort of differentiation. Anyway, I, I digress. Moving on to the lights, as I was doing then, by accident. I mean, the chief light, I think it's just a starting. It's coming into its own, it's dateless. You can't quite work out what age it is. It's like a modern classic. It's 20 years old now, so it is sort of classic. I love how the interior has no screen on it to date it or anything. It's just a beautifully designed, styled car. I don't mind the chrome trinkets on the outside. That's its style, that's what the Z8 is. And I like the way it's unique, Not has not been copied. There isn't a, you know, the Z8 Evo come out. Evo is 11.7 seconds to 100, but actually that's plenty quick enough. It, it would impress people who haven't been in a car like this. It doesn't have the performance that seems to be the norm these days, but it's a very livable performance. An 150 mile an hour with the roof off, I can promise you, feels extremely quick. Another like, I suppose, is just the sheer depth of quality. It was a beautifully assembled uh, car. I love how you get everything, the hard top, everything, torno cover, I haven't put it on here on this time. It's a book that comes with it during its build. The quality of the switches, the quality of the air conditioning, the just dripping 
with quality, no half measures. BMW wanted this car to be right, and 20 years on, it really shows. So that's, yeah, conclusion. I just think this is, I can understand why they've got more expensive. It, it doesn't appeal to the track day junkie at all, but there's a much bigger audience who just wants a sort of classic car, but a modern classic car, modern take. It's that's what we're doing now with our classic car. Well, this is like one of those. The car it sort of reminds me of is the Mercedes um, Pagoda, the early SL, brought, but brought right up to date. And, you know, people who don't want a classic car and have all the finicky trouble of a classic car, buy a Z8. It just works, turn key, and you can have it serviced at any BMW garage in the land. That is appealing, and that's why the price has gone up. It's a sort of an unrepeatable car, it's not something they can do these days, and its time is now coming. We didn't understand it in 2000, 2001. It was seemed a confused car. Now, 20 years on, it feels like a very sensible car, because I want to I want to enjoy that, that manual V8 BMW Roadster, but I want it to just work and have air conditioning and stuff, and have 11 seconds to 100 miles an hour. And I want it to look special like not another BMW. That's what the Z8 is. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, well, please keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.